Uh, okay, last thing I want to mention today is this concept of perfect forward secrecy. And it's perfect, so it doesn't get any better. It's as good as it gets. Okay. Here's kind of the um, issue. Suppose uh, Trudy, Alice and Bob are using a protocol. The protocol is secure. Trudy cannot break that protocol. Trudy really is desperate to break this. She thinks it's a really important message. So what could Trudy do? Well, here's what she could do. She could record all the messages, all the messages that are in the protocol, and then all the encrypted messages that follow using the session key. Okay, she, she records those just out of desperation. Okay, now later, she goes to Alice's computer and she breaks in and gets Alice's private key. Now what? She goes back to the protocol, she decrypts the session key stuff, she gets the session key, and she decrypts all the messages. Great, okay. Well, okay, so the question is, could you prevent that kind of attack? Could you make it so that even if sometime after the fact, Trudy goes and breaks in and gets Alice's private key or the key they're using for authentication, right, whatever the case may be, you get symmetric keys, but breaks in and gets the important secrets, she cannot go back and break the messages. Okay. If you can do that, we'll call that perfect forward secrecy. Okay, so this might seem a little esoteric, right? Why would you care about this? Who's going to record all these messages and break in later and get your key and stuff? The NSA. <laughs> FBI. <Okay. laughs> so, um, unless you're not a U.S. citizen. No, FBI. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so, uh, but think about it. You know, if, if, if you don't have this property, okay, now somebody could have recorded all those messages and now I'm going to, you know, get rid of my computer. My computer has my private key on it, right? If someone gets a hold of that, it could be a problem. So I've got to somehow be very cautious in how I treat those, you know, those secrets in the future. And I've got to make sure those are all traces of those guys are gone. Whereas if I have this property, I can, you know, not have to worry about those kind of things. Okay, so this is known as perfect forward secrecy. Now we probably wouldn't, to be honest, we probably wouldn't worry too much about this, except for the fact it's actually pretty easy to achieve. Okay, a nice, clever way to to do this. Okay. So is this possible? Well, okay, so the point here is, um, let's suppose we're using a symmetric key for authentication, okay, that case where Alice and Bob share a symmetric key. Now, they can't use that key to encrypt the messages, okay, because if Trudy gets that later, she'd be able to decrypt all the messages, okay, so that's no good. So we, clearly we have to have a session key, okay, but how do we establish this session key in such a way that if Trudy gets K, she can't get the session key. Okay, that's the trick. Seems kind of counterintuitive. You know, how could you possibly do that? Well, okay, here's our first attempt. Let's suppose we have some authentication protocol. Let's kind of skip the authentication part, just focus on the session key establishment part here. That's what we're really concerned with. So they share a key K. Alice makes up a session key, call it K sub S, sends it to Bob. Now they both know the key K sub S, right? And now they can encrypt the messages back and forth using the key K sub S. Now, does this give us perfect forward secrecy? No. Why not? Trudy could just record this. She could record all these messages. Later, she breaks in, gets this key K. She goes back, decrypts this, gets this, decrypts all of those. Okay, that's what we're trying to prevent. That's what we're trying to avoid. Okay, this doesn't help, okay? So the question is, how can we establish that session key in a way that will prevent this? Uh, any ideas without looking ahead to the slides? Well, the crucial thing is that this attack sort of happens after the fact. So have we talked about anything that is really hard to break sort of after the fact, but kind of Anyway, I don't know how to ask this question. <laughs> okay, so here we go. There's a really clever solution to this. It's called Diffie-Hellman. Okay, so we left Diffie-Hellman uh, before, and it kind of looked, you know, kind of sketchy. You know, is that really useful for anything? Well, it's really a very elegant solution to this problem. So just a reminder on how Diffie-Hellman works. We have these two public values, G and P. 
Alice selects her uh, secret value exponent A, Bob selects his exponent B, Alice sends G to the A mod P, Bob sends G to the B mod P, their secret is G to the A B mod P, which could be used as a session key, right? Okay. Okay, now the problem with Dippin Hellman is what? The, the man in the middle attack. How do we prevent that? When we talked about Dippy Hellman, how do you prevent the man in the middle? Okay, this is going to be on the test. How do we prevent the man in the middle attack? You could encrypt the messages, you could sign the messages, remember all that, but why did that seem kind of nonsensical? What's the purpose of Dippy Hellman? Key exchange, you already had a key, you're encrypting them. Okay, but here it actually kind of makes sense, okay? So here's the scenario. So Alice and Bob, they've shared the symmetric key K. Alice generates a secret exponent B, A, Bob a secret exponent B. Alice sends G to the A mod P encrypted with K. Bob sends G to the B mod P. Their session key is? G to the AB. Now they use that key to encrypt a bunch of mess messages, right? Okay, K sub S. Okay, now Alice, once she generates K sub S, she has no use for A anymore, right? So she gets rid of it. Once Bob generates uh, K sub S, he has no use for B, so he gets rid of it, okay? Now, Trudy, she's desperate again to get, to get these guys. She records all the messages in the authentication protocol and all the messages encrypted with this key. Later, after the fact, she breaks into Alice's computer and gets her secret. What's her secret? Her secret's K. What can Trudy do? She can decrypt this and get G to the A mod P. She can decrypt this, get G to the B mod P, but she cannot get G to the A B mod P unless she can solve that hard discrete log problem. The man in the middle attack happens in real time. After the fact, you're out of luck, right? In fact, even Alice and Bob can't recover a case of S if they forget it, right? They don't have enough information once they get rid of A and B. Okay, so if they can't do it, certainly um, Alice can't do it either, or Trudy can't do it either. Okay, and they call this an ephemeral Diffie Hellman because you forget these values, throw them away. Uh, okay, so let's try to put this all. Oh, oh, here's a question to think about Are there other ways you could achieve this? Other ways to get this property of perfect forward secrecy? Just a hint, if you're in CS265, you ought to think about this a little bit. Okay, so let's try to put it all together. Let's see if we can get mutual authentication, a session key, and perfect forward secrecy. And let's use the, the thing we did with the, let's build it on the idea of public key. So we have that public key thing where we sign and encrypt. Let's do something similar here. So Alice says, I'm Alice, sends the challenge to Bob. What Bob is supposed to reply with is his own challenge. Here's a challenge to you, Alice. And we're going to encrypt. In this case, we're going to do the encrypt and then something. But um, Alice, uh, Bob takes the challenge he got from Alice. Okay, by signing that, right, that's what's going to convince Alice that it's really Bob. He generates a Diffie Hellman value. Okay, he encrypts that. Okay, that's the encryption part for the perfect code secrecy. He sends that. Very similar thing. Alice sends back. Uh, the encrypted uh, or signed, actually is the important thing here, signed uh, <coughs> nonce uh, along with her Dippy Helm value. What's their session key? G to the, G to the AB mod B, there you go. Uh, and they can use that to encrypt their messages. Now once they've forgotten A and B, if Trudy breaks in, recovers Alice's private key, she could undo all this stuff, right? She could get G to the a, and if she get, even if she gets Bob's private key, she could get this, but she cannot get G to the A. Okay. It's kind of a nice property, this perfect forward secrecy, and it's really easy to get. You don't have to work very hard to get. Okay. Okay, so any questions about this? What's going on here? Okay. 
Uh, okay, that's a good place to stop.